Those going to Tanjavur from Kudantai would travel along the bank of Arisalarang or above the banks of Kaveri and reach Tiravayat. From there they will turn south and go to Tanjavur. There were comfortable fields along the way crossing the rivers Kudamurti, Vateru, Venar, and Vataru. Departing from Kudantai, Valavarayan first went towards Arisalangkare. All the sights he saw on the way amazed him more than anything he had heard about the Chola country. Isn't the sweetness of any sweet scene the first time you see it? Cow pea fields, ginger and yellow fields, sugarcane and banana plantations, coconut and kamuk groves, wavi, streams, ponds and drains were coming and going. Lilies and lilies bloomed wildly in the streams. Sentamara, Vendamara, Neelathpavam, and red water were spectacular in the ponds. White cranes flew in flocks. Brick storks performed penance standing on one leg. Water gushed through the gates. The cultivators ploughed deeper and cultivated the mud of the canals, which had been covered with good manure and leaf manure. Women planted crops in cultivated fields. While planting, they sang sweet folk songs. Sugarcane mills were set up next to sugarcane plantations. They cut the mature black canes cultivated last year and gave them to the sugarcane mills to squeeze the juice. The smell of sugarcane juice and the smell of brewing jaggery mixed together and pierced the nose. Among the coconut groves were thatched huts and thatched houses. In villages, the door of the house was waxed clean and the floor was made like glass. Paddy was left to dry at the doors of some houses. The paddy chickens came and ate it and said, Kokariko. They shouted and went back. The girls who were guarding the paddy didn't chase away the hens. How much rice is the chicken going to eat? The children were playing Koli and Palankuzi with indifference. Stove smoke was coming up through the roofs of the huts. Along with the smoke of the stove came the smell of rice rotting, the smell of roasting rye, and the smell of stewing meat. Warriors in those days were mostly carnivores. Valavaria is like that, so the smell made his tongue water. Here and there there were blacksmith furnaces on the side of the road. The fire in the furnaces glowed appropriately. The sound of hammering the iron in the workshop was heard Dana, Dana. In those furnace fields, there were piles of knives, shields, swords, spears, etc., along with shovels, 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 etc. needed by the inhabitants. Citizens and warriors vie to buy them and wait. Tiny temples were also present in small villages. Inside the temple, there was the sound of beating the Shimekalam, the sound of the Nagara, the chanting of mantras and the chanting of Devara. The village deities like Mariamon were made to stand up on the couch and the priests took the Karagam and came to offer the paddy offering. The boys drove the cows with bells around their necks to graze. Some of them played the flute. The villagers used to work in the field and sit under the tree to relax. Then the sheep were driven to fight and they had fun. The female peacocks sit on the roofs of the houses and crow, and the male peacocks, unable to lift their wings, fly away and sit next to the female peacocks. Pigeons fluttered their beautiful necks around. Pity! Caged parrots and minas sang sad songs. Amused by seeing all such scenes, Vandiyadevan led the horse slowly. His eyes had a lot to do. The mind was also enjoying these various scenes. Yet in his mind, as if lightly covered with snow, a woman's face was still familiar. Aha! Shouldn't the woman have opened her ovaries and had a few words with herself? What would she have lost if she had spoken? Who is that girl? Doesn't anyone deserve a little respect? Do you look so indifferent to me? Didn't the old soothsayer cheat by not telling who the girl was? He is a rich man, an incredible villain. How does one look deeply into the minds of others? How much worldly experience does he speak with? The important thing is that he didn't say anything. He was very careful to avoid saying anything in matters of state. Or he managed to say what everyone already knew with great tact. But didn't he say well that his lucky planets have reached their peak? May the baby astrologer be good. Thinking all this, Vandiyadeva left. Occasional visions occasionally drew him from the world of thought to the world. At last he reached the bank of Arizalaram. 
After going some distance along the river bank, they heard the sound of women shaking their wrists and the sound of cheerful laughter. Not knowing where they were, the densely grown trees on the banks of the river were hiding them. Vandiyathevan kept looking at the river bank to find out where the voice of the women was coming from. Suddenly, oh! Oh! Crocodile! Crocodile! Scared! He also heard a threatening voice. He bucked his horse towards the direction of the voice. Through a gap between two trees he could see where the women were. Many of them had panic on their faces. Miracle! Miracle! Two of them left when Vandiyadeva entered the astrologer's house. Vandiyathevan saw all this in a second and knew it. Did he only see that? Beneath a large tree that gave a thick shade, root after root, half on the ground and half in the water, a monstrous crocodile was slitting its mouth. Vandiyadeva had recently seen a ferocious crocodile come out of the Kalata River with its mouth open. He had also heard how dangerous the crocodile is. So when he saw this crocodile he was troubled, he was nervous. Because the crocodile was very recently the smiling women. It was monstrous in form, with a gaping mouth and bared monstrous teeth. The crocodile has yet to take one more leap. The fate of those women will be disastrous. The women were in no position to flee because of the thick trees behind them. No matter how confused Vandiyadeva's heart was, he did not lose even an iota of determination. He didn't think for a moment about what he had to do. He saw the work mark in his hand and threw it away. The whale jumped on the crocodile's thick back and went in a little and stood upright. Immediately our hero drew his sword and rushed forward with the determination to finish the job of the crocodile in one fell swoop. As before, at that moment the girls were heard laughing merrily. Vandiyadeva's ears were displeased with it. Why are they laughing at such a dangerous time? The runner was stunned for a moment. He saw the women's faces. He saw no fear or panic in their faces. Instead he saw signs of derision. Before long, I I. I couldn't believe that they were the ones who shouted that. One of them, the woman he had just seen in the astrologer's house, said in a majestic sweet voice, Girls. Be quiet, why are you laughing? It was said in a deep voice that fell on his ears as if he were hearing it in a dream. The one who rushed the crocodile stood hesitating as he drew his sword. He stared at the crocodile, he looked at the women's faces once more. A doubt arose that made his heart cringe with shame and make his body cringe. By this time the lady came forward from the others. She stood against the crocodile as if she was protecting it. Sir! Thank you very much, don't trouble yourself in vain. She said.